hello guys in this video we are going to be looking at the northwest regional mock 2022 for the mathematics paper one we are going to solve some couple of questions in the examination all right so um for presentation i am ken elsin i'm a student engineer at the national advanced school of public works in yaoundi and you can visit our platform through the link www.tefafric.com you study well for your GCE to get good grades. Alright, so the very first question was under the topic hyperbolic functions and the question reads cos of lin2, cos of lin2 is equal to and the responses were given. So let's get the solution. Firstly, we give the definition of the cosine of x which is half into e to the x plus e to the negative x. Now from there, we note an identity which is e raised to the power the lin of a is equal to a provided a is greater than zero now we want to look for the lin of the coach of lin 2 so we simply see that we have actually replaced x with lin 2 in the expression of coach of x so simply doing that we have this expression that has been displayed to you that equation so from there using the identity that e raised to the power lin of a is equal to a we simply have e raised to the power the lin of 2 to be equal to 2 and e raised to the power the lin of half to be equal to half so from there we get our response as um, um, half into 2 plus half which is half into 5 divided by 2 and from there we get the response as 5 divided by 4 so the correct answer to this was option C 5 divided by 4 Alright, question number, question number 2 actually was on polar coordinates The question reads The tangent at the pole to the curve r equal to root 2 minus 2 cos theta is theta equal to So for the solution, simply at the poles r is equal to 0 r equal to 0, it therefore means that cosine of theta is equal to root 2 on 2 From there we can find theta which is basically the principal angle which is cosinus of root 2 on 2 do that on your calculator you get theta to be equal to pi on 4 so the correct answer is option b okay question number theory was on conic sections and the question reads if the cut joining the points p and q as given on the parabola y squared equal to 4ax passes through the focus then we have the various options so for the solution we first of all try to graph the parabola that has been given to us now s is the focus and it is going to have coordinate a0 and from there we have been told that word that the the cut that is joining the point p and q passes through the focus it therefore means that word that the gradients of the line qs and sp are the same now we can find the gradient of qs which is the expression on your left that of um qp is that is the expression on your right so from there we equate and we try to simplify and we get our response as pq is equal to negative one hence option d fourth question was applications of calculus it reads the root mean square of one on x in the interval um one to four is so for the solution the root mean square of a function one on x in the interval one to four is defined by the formula r equal to the integral of 1 divided by 4 minus 1 which is 1 divided by 3 the integral from 1 to 4 of my function squared which is 1 on x or squared integrated with respect to x since it's the root mean square value we need to take the square root so from there we simply integrate 1 on x squared doing that we get negative 1 on x but i am integrating my limits of integration are from 1 to 4 so i can remove the negative sign and the my bounds change now from 4 to 1 by so doing i try to simplify and i get my response as the root mean square of the function on 1 on x in the interval 1 to 4 is simply r equal to half hence option b is the correct answer so let's move on to question 5 which is on modulo arithmetic the question reads the inverse of 4 in modulo 7 is solution now what is the inverse of 4 in modulo 7 is simply a certain number that if you multiply the number by 4 it is congruent to 1 in mode 7 so 
clearly we see that 4 times 2 is 8 which is congruent to 1 mod 7 hence my inverse of 4 in modulus 7 is 2 hence option b is correct question 6 on complex transformations the question reads the complex transformation t which maps a point z to omega is given by omega is equal to i z represents that give you the options so simply let's get the solution the transformation can be characterized by a scale factor of one which is simply um the magnitude of i now the, the angle of rotation is the argument of i which is pi on two and the center is zero divided by one minus i which is um which has an affix zero i plus zero j thus represented by the point zero zero hence the origin now this therefore describes a rotation about the origin through 90 degrees which is clockwise since my angle of rotation is positive it means it is anti-clockwise if my angle of rotation was negative it is going to be clockwise if you face difficulties in this topic a video is being displayed by your screen and you can click on it and you follow up the lesson on complex transformations question 7 was on probability and the question reads that's the question now let's get the solution to this problem First of all, we have been told that t is a continuous random variable. So by the definition, we have the integral from 0 to infinity of my function plus the integral from negative infinity to 0 of my function to be equal to 1 according to the piecewise function that has been defined to us. So from there, we simply just integrate the functions in the various intervals. And since it is an improper integral, we use its limit definition. From there, we can get the value of k by taking the limit of that and we get the value of k to be equal to 2 hence option a is correct next question 8 which is on limits the question reads the limit as x tends to 0 of that quantity is equal to now let's recall something if i let l to be my limit now i know the definition of sine 2x is 2 sine x cos x i can factor out half and i get that quantity from there we simplify and we get that relationship now from standard limits we know that as x tends to 0 sine x on x is tending to 1 hence we have that limit to give us half times 1 to the 19 times 1 divided by 1 because the cosine of x is tending to 1 as x is tending to 0 hence the response is half so option B is correct question 9 so logic it reads the contrapositive of the statement that give you the statement simply if the statement that has been given if you want to find a contrapositive is simply not cure implies not p because the statement is p implies cure from there we can write out the contrapositive and we get our response if x is different from 5 then x plus 2 is different from 7 so option b is correct question 10 which is the last question curve sketching and limits the question reads the oblique asymptote to the curve defined by this is so I'll give some recourse of oblique asymptote. So to find the oblique asymptote of a rational function, we either use Euclidean division or we use the formal definition of the diagonal asymptote. So I generally prefer to use its definition. So if a line y equal to mx plus c is the diagonal asymptote, then we can find the gradient and the intercept. The gradient is simply m, which is the limit as x tends to plus or minus infinity of f of x of f of x on x. We can obtain that limit as negative one. And c is simply the limit as x tends to plus or minus infinity of the function minus mx. By so doing, we get our intercept to be 3. Hence, the line y equal to negative x plus 3 is the diagonal asymptote. So, the correct response is d. So, that's that for the video. If you enjoyed the video, um, you can get to the Tepafric platform to get more video solutions on the past GC equations just at 400 francs and you are guaranteed your success so subscribe to the channel as well as turn on your post notifications so that when a video is popped up you get to um be alerted whenever a video is being uploaded to the channel thank you for your time and see you later